This is the late report. Well, Federal Way has raised its drunk driving limit from 0.08 to 0.10 to match the state levels. Now, this means that if you must drive through Federal Way, it'll now be a little less painful. <laughs> Boeing's negotiations to buy McDonnell Douglas have broken down because the two companies could not agree on a price or who would lead the company. In fact, the only thing they could agree on was that after the merger, they would fly over to France and pants everyone at Airbus. <laughs> <clears throat> TCI Cablevision says that they will be doing some FCC-required tests on their equipment that may cause a few outages in their service area. TCI says that they'll be doing these tests late at night, so it should not affect their normal daytime outages. <laughs> the city of Seattle has posted a no trespassing sign near the entrance of the city hall building because of health problems caused by human urine and discarded hypodermic needles. A spokesperson for the city said that those city council members are just going to have to find another place to take their pee and heroin breaks. A Czech trading company that, that saw an article on Fremont's statue of Lenin is offering to sell Seattle a number of other bronze statues of other former USSR leaders. Fremont has offered to buy one of them and says that in the future, the statue waiting for the interurban will be known as the waiting for the interurban with Stalin. <laughs> Washington State University Library has been given a huge collection of Beatles memorabilia, including albums, videotape performances, and posters. The donor explained the gift by saying that he was sitting at home listening to the Beatles, I'm a loser, and just naturally thought of Wazoo. <laughs> In a recent meeting in Mount Vernon, a Montana militia leader said that the government has modified 747s. So they can fly over an area, totally black it out, and then transmit whatever they want you to hear without you knowing it. Now, while there's no evidence that this has ever happened, we do have a clip from a newscast last night that does raise some questions. Do we have that? The government announced today that everything is okay and that all citizens are happy and satisfied with their lives. I know I'm satisfied. Aren't you, Dan? Yes, I sure am, Everything Kathy. Very great. satisfied. In other news, everyone in the world has enough to eat. <laughs> mm. Mm. Makes you think, doesn't it? Well, last week, a shocked nation listened as several football players swore on national television, and this has caused some concern, and here with a comment is Bill Staten. Bill? Thanks, John. Okay. You know, there's been a lot of talk about these idiot football players swearing on national TV after their big game. Now, personally, I don't really care. I'm not offended by words like, words like this. I hear them all the time, often from John, sometimes from Nancy. Still, <laughs> a lot of people do find this kind of language offensive, and yet we are hearing it more and more. Why? Because somewhere along the way, we lost the idea of using substitute swear words. Now, in the old days, of course, this meant the basic four. Heck, shoot, dang, and fudge. <laughs> Unfortunately, these perfectly adequate substitutes have fallen out of usage in today's profane world. Heck left our vocabulary about the time the crazy world of Arthur Brown came out with their song, Fire. It just didn't have the impact if you sang it, I am the god of heck fire! <laughs> now, you still hear shoot floating around a bit, but it's usually coming from people who look kind of Gomer Pyle-ish, you know? Now, the substitute swear word, dang, was often combined with the substitute deity, gall, to form gall dang it, now obsolete. And fudge as an expletive is pretty much only heard in nursing homes and in Ballard. So, I think there's a clear need for new substitute swear words, and, and I have a few suggestions here. One idea is to use expressions that mean the same thing, but communicate positive values. For example, if you're a Seahawk and you want to express disappointment over having lost yes, yet another football game, you could say, I can't believe we lost that loving and consensual act of intimacy between two mature adults football game. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Instead of just saying Courtney Love is a bitch, why not say Courtney Love is like a puppy, a warm, friendly female puppy who sometimes punches people? <laughs> see the difference? Of course, our own cultural environment can be a rich source of substitute swear words as well. For example, the next time an employee turns in a project that isn't up to par, try saying something like, Henderson, I'm not going to accept this work. It's a pile of shram. And <laughs> of course, if you're Henderson, if you're Henderson here, you can reply with, yeah, why don't you just shove it up your Aberdeen? 
In my opinion, that's what we need. If you don't agree with me, fife you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Bill. Thank you. Very interesting. Finally, attorney Johnny Cochran was in Bellevue earlier this week for a speaking engagement. And while in the area, he also filmed a TV commercial for Nordstrom's where he said, and remember, if it doesn't fit, you must take it back for a full refund. This has been The Late Report. Don't go away or I'll, I'll fudge you up.